Deidre 168. To Deidre a lot of updates from the east. Here the Russians managed to breach one of the key points on the Ukrainian defense line and cause a local collapse on the front. This gave the Russians a chance to double the number of assaults on the last remaining settlements north of Bakhmut and unfortunately for the Ukrainians, the Russians managed to push them out on the last day of suitable weather. Last time I told you that the Russians concentrated their assault units to the north of Bakhmut in order to take control over the last settlements on the line before the weather conditions deteriorated, in particular Barkhivka, Yahidne and train station Stupochke. The situation in Barkhivka was very dire and the Russians managed to push the Ukrainians out of this village after one day of additional clashes. The situation around Yahidne was more stable and the Ukrainians here even conducted a successful counterattack. But unfortunately, with the fall of Barkhivka, the defense line quickly fell apart. The Russians managed to overwhelm the Ukrainians with fire by opening additional lines of attack and eventually capturing Yahidne. After that, they basically put the Ukrainians near the train station into a salient, so the Ukrainians were forced to step back from this position as well. In order to slow down the Russians, the Ukrainians have blown up a small dam on the outskirts of Bakhmut. The release of the water flooded the streets between Ukrainian and Russian-controlled territories and also cut off some Russian positions from the mainland, which in the short term diminished the room for maneuver. The Ukrainians here got very unlucky, because the Russians managed to achieve their tactical goals during the last day of the suitable for massive assaults weather. As you can see from the video, the Ukrainians blew up the dam when it already started raining. The video was filmed in the morning when it was still cold, so there was a mixture of snow and rain. But recent videos from Bakhmut clearly show that the snow has almost entirely melted, because around a week ago everything was still white. The latest developments mean that there are no Ukrainian fortifications between Russian positions and the last highway leading out of Bakhmut. There are several smaller roads between this highway and Ivanivske, but they are going through the fields, and with the current weather, the chance of getting stuck is very high. One of the things that the Ukrainians can do is to capitalize on the recent gains in the forest near Ivanivske and continue pushing the Russians further south. This should give them more room for withdrawal by using the highway to get to Ivanivske, and once they reach Ivanivske, they would still need to go through the fields because the bridge is destroyed, but these fields should be easier to cross because they are located on the higher ground and therefore should be drier. When it comes to Bakhmut itself, it looks like the Ukrainians are finishing their withdrawal from the eastern bank. Yesterday the group was finally split into two small groups. As predicted, one group is slowly withdrawing via the northern bridge and another one via the dam. Some sources even suggest that the Russians already controlled the whole residential area with small houses and one of the two high-rise building areas. When it comes to the number of troops left, Russian sources suggest that they are expecting to capture up to 20,000 Ukrainian soldiers. However, this number is based on the assumption that all the brigades that are involved in the defense of Bakhmut are in full force and are all inside Bakhmut, which is not true at all. Each brigade is represented only by a few elements, while most troops are kept out of Bakhmut for rotation purposes. According to the military-affiliated spokesman, there are no more than 5,000 troops in Bakhmut, and given that this report is outdated, at the moment the Ukrainians likely have even fewer troops. This is not unlikely because during the battle for Severodonetsk, there were only 2,500 soldiers holding the city, and at the final stages it took the Ukrainians only 600 troops to defend most of the industrial zone. And Severodonetsk is almost exactly the size of Bakhmut, which makes it for a fair comparison. The estimated number of troops suggests that the city is not overcrowded and withdrawal remains an option. But the deteriorating weather conditions make the whole situation tricky, because on the one hand it is unlikely that the Russians will be able to establish full control over the roads, but on the other hand it makes it very hard to use the remaining roads in the fields. But very soon we will see how the Ukrainians decide to act under the current circumstances. If you are against the invasion of Ukraine and you want to support the work that I am doing, consider making a purchase in the online store you are a supporter. Here you can find a lot of products with Ukrainian symbols to not only show your support for this channel, but also for Ukraine. The link to the online store is in the description. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next report.